Okay, so the last box is a deep box. It's actually the deepest of all the boxes that come in the kit. And I generally use it to store all my bottles of liquid. Part of it is because it's the bottom one and it's tall enough to hold most of them. The only thing it really doesn't hold is anything that comes in a gallon jug. So like my big container of lube for when I have to check on a use that are having difficulty breathing. I have that kept in a separate spot um, along with some propylene glycol which is used for treating uh, ketosis in pregnant ewes. Usually it's the ones that are within the last 30 days of their pregnancy. Uh, those items I keep separate just because they don't fit in the box. Now going through everything that we have in the box I have some Vetrisin spray. It's good whenever you've cleaned out wounds to spray it on there and it kind of helps promote the healing process. And I also have a pink eye spray because it's not always easy to get the drops in the eyes. Sometimes it's easier to spray them. Um, I have some liquid vitamin B which is used for when you have anemic sheep and goats. You can use this in a drench form to give it to them to help boost their system up. I have some injectable vitamin B and that helps also with the anemia. Biggest thing is if you're treating anemia you really want the thiamine which is your B1. So whenever you're looking at your vitamins to find something, find something that has B1. I have some red cell which I had for the horses. For anemia, um, you have to be careful using this with the sheep as it does have some copper in it. I'd only use it if you have a vet veterinarian that says to use it and gives you the dosage for them. I have some injectable uh, iron, which if they're anemic, that helps with the anemia. I have some betadine uh, surgical scrub. Used for cleaning wounds out. Copper tox, if you uh, as you're treating their feet, uh, trimming their feet, and you notice that they have an odor coming from the feet, you can help put this in there, and it'll help with um, eliminating some of the bacteria that could possibly be causing the foot rot or foot scald. I have some iodine. Same thing. You can use it for. Cleaning out wounds just needs to be diluted down. Uh, I have a spray bottle that I have a mix of iodine and water. Uh, generally whenever I'm trimming hooves, um, if I manage to nick the pad just a little bit, I'll go ahead and spray them with that just to help clean out the wound. Uh, if I'm treating wounds and I'm wanting to keep the flies off of it, I'll put and to help keep it from getting sunburned. I'll put Alice Shield on it. It's based, it'll look silver when you're done and it gets everywhere. Uh, you may have to repeat that every couple of days. Another thing, if you're docking tails or you've got some wounds that you need to take care of, you can use pine tar to cover the wounds. I'm not as fond of it just because it's sticky and messy and gets everywhere. Uh, I have a small bottle of General Lube. That way if I'm just doing some general stuff or if I'm doing uh fecal egg counts, I can take the fecal sample and not have to bring out my big bottle of lube. I've got my LA200, which is a long-acting antibiotic. It does not need to be refrigerated. I have Corid, which is used for treating coccidiosis in the sheep and goats. It's mixed in with water. You can either be given as a drench or left in the water trough. There's different ratios for mixing depending on how you're using it. Then I have the three different classes of warmers. Cydectin, which uh, contains the ingredient of moxidectin. And then valbazin, which uh, has the active green albinazole. And then prohibit which has the active ingredient of limonosol hydrochloride. Um, the Cydectin 
and the Valbazin come in a liquid. Make sure you shake them well prior to drawing up any of the wormer to be given. Uh, kind of got it here. If you look at the bottle, you might be able to see that it's kind of a clearish at the bottom. And if you look at the bottom, it looks white. That's because it's settled out, the main ingredients. So you need to shake it and turn it over so you can see. Uh, and you'll see, I'll do it on the one that hasn't been shaken yet. You can see that the sediment in the bottom is from where the medication is uh, separated out from the solution. You just got to shake it back up really well before giving it so that it gives it at the right dosing. Uh, I have here the Coppershire Copper Boluses. That way if you're treating worms on the sheep, I wouldn't give more than one a year. Hopefully you're not having a worm any more than that. Um, but what it does is it has copper wire particles in it that slowly dissolve in the stomach and that is what helps with uh, knocking out the worms. I have selenium and vitamin E paste, vitamin B paste, probiotic paste, and electrolyte paste. So generally if I'm worming sheep, I'll give them their wormer. Then I'll go through and give them a dose of each of these uh, to help boost their system up. Warmers are really hard and harsh on the uh, rumen. Uh, and if they have been affected by the worms that much that they need to be wormed, they're probably, their system down, so it needs a little boost. And that's what the selenium, vitamin E, electrolytes, the vitamin B, and the probiotics uh, do is they give the system a boost after being wormed. Um, that is something that wormers will kill out most of the gut flora and giving them the probiotics uh, helps kind of jump start that back so that you're not disturbing their digestive system for very long. And I have some bloat treatment back here. Uh, they'll be given as a drench. I have SWAT, which is kind of a cream paste that you can apply for fly control. So for the ones that I've docked or the ones that I've castrated from banding, I'll take some of this and apply, not directly on the wound, you don't want it in the wound, but around the area and I'll reapply it every, it lasts about two, maybe three days depending. But I'll reapply it to help keep the flies away so they don't get fly strike in the area that I've banded. And the other thing I have, just in case I haven't had any need for it yet, is screw worm spray. Um, and the biggest thing with this is it kills flies and fly maggots on wounds. So if for some reason you've managed to get somebody that gets wounded and you didn't notice it immediately, uh, you can get it cleaned out and then sp spray that on it to help get the rest of the maggots killed out. Some additional items I have that aren't actually in the mobile kit. I have a pair of shears. That way if I need to shear somebody, especially around a wound, uh, just to help keep everything out of the wound, I can use these. Uh, I've got blade wash to be able to clean the uh, shears if they start getting clogged up with the wool from shearing and as you're using the shears you've got to go through and oil them approximately every five to ten minutes depending upon how fast or how much wool you're having to cut through um, the other thing I have up here on the table is my fecal egg count kit a little Tupperware tub to contain everything I have a couple of five minute sand timers. I have a scale that I can measure in grams. Um, I have little pill cups basically. Uh, that's what you'll use to make your slurry to be able to test. I have a 60 cc syringe for drawing up the solution. I have some pipettes and little popsicle sticks which you should be able to get it any kind of craft store and it's just disposable throwaway stirrers 
because you have to crush up and mix your fecal sample in the solution so that you'll be able to find eggs if they're present. I have a pair of scissors, a little strainer, a sharpie, and the Famasha card. You should have seen that when we were demonstrating the Famasha, uh, checking the eyelid to check for anemia to see if we have internal parasite uh, infestation. One thing I don't have showing up here right now is a microscope for use to be able to actually look at I forgot to say, I have a master slide. It's kind of hiding there because it's clear. Um, they do have master slides that have the graded area with blue or green lines, which I like that a lot better, a little bit easier to keep track of where you're at as you're trying to count your fields to determine your egg load. Uh, the other thing I don't show in here, and it's because you can make it, is the solution. It's basically a saltwater solution used to uh, suspend the eggs up to the surface. Uh, that way you can draw them off and using the pipettes, fill them with master slides so you can do your actual egg count under the microscope. Um, one of the things with the Famasha card... Uh, this is through research, and it's on sheep. You can use it for goats, but generally a one uh, on a sheep, goats tend to be a little bit better than that. So the color is shifted by one. Uh, one of the things they found over time is they've done some research with it using the Famasha card. Uh, the color of the eyelid corresponds to the hematocrit count level of the animal if he's actually to do blood work to see how anemic they are. Um, and I'll go into actually doing a fecal egg count with another section of this. I just wanted to show the kit as it's part of my treatment kit for everything. This is just not included in the kit itself, as is normally located where the microscope's held at. One of the things, whenever I go out to deliberately work the animals, say I know I need a, I've got a set of sheep that need to be vaccinated, or I need to get weights on lambs, I have a spreadsheet that I use um, for my normal working items. And I have on here the weight, Famasha score, uh, for their feet overgrown. Um, and then if I'm vaccinating right now, I'm just giving Covexin 8. And then if they need penicillin for the ones that I'm docking tails or castrating. And then for my selenium, probiotic, vitamin B, and electrolyte paste. And all I gotta do is put a mark in there or I put the dosage in there or I put the score in there based upon what was done and if they didn't need anything I just put a line through that so like typically for the um, pace I only give that generally if I'm worming them if they don't need to be wormed they won't get it unless I have a lamb that is acting a little lethargic maybe not just feeling the greatest I'll hit them with them then to help perk them back up and it helps kind of fight through whatever little crud they may have been trying to pick up. Uh, also whenever working animals for the sheep, uh, since we don't have a nice set of chutes to run them into and a squeeze chute to hold them, I have the halter, we go catch them, put the halter on them and lead them over to our working stanchions so that we can work on them then. The other thing here this is a scale, it's a hanging scale to be used for weighing lambs. As you can see it's got a little sling. Uh, you put that around them and buckle them in and then you can lift them up to weigh them. Highly recommend though that you get a actual regular livestock scale. That way you can just run them across it, get the weight and move on without having to actually do any lifting or trying to put them in the contraption to weigh them.